And just remember that each of those drones costs anywhere between $600 and $1,000 if you add a grenade to it, which basically means for $1,000 and deployed in numbers, the Israeli, the Israeli forces really have a potential nightmare on their hands. Now, after the aerial drones that you've just seen and we've shown you in this video that the Hamas has put out, the Hamas has also put out a video of submarine drones. Now, take a look at this picture. These are propaganda videos, but the reason we're showing them to you is not to platform them, but because we want to decode and give you a reality check of what you're looking at. Because sometimes these propaganda videos are exaggerated. They make it seem like a very, very lethal capability. But what exactly are we looking at here? Here we're looking at what appears to be some kind of a torpedo rigged with a GoPro camera in the front that provides a live stream of visuals taken into the water by two uh, you know, scuba divers of the Hamas and then released. What it appears to be is a torpedo that can be manually guided from a control center on the beach by Hamas frogmen to hit Israeli naval assets, including boats, warships, and surveillance vessels. What this basically means is that despite air attacks, ground strikes, and naval assets of the Israeli Navy closing in on the Gaza Strip, injecting special forces, you know, using their own uh, uh, deck guns to hit port facilities on the Gaza Strip. These torpedoes can now pose a threat. They've been written about since about 2017, but this is one of the first times that clear video footage of a naval torpedo attack capability or an underwater drone capability, as Hamas is calling it, are actually seen on video footage. They've never been used in the past before. A couple of occasions in the past when such uh, underwater drones have been deployed against uh, naval uh, warships of the Israeli Navy, they've been intercepted and deactivated and were not found to be effective. But is something changing now? Is this muscle flexing against the Israeli Navy? Now, three weeks back, Israel's defense minister ordered a blockade of electricity and fuel supply to Gaza. The war was in its first phase then, as we reported. It's now well into its fourth week. It'll soon be a month since this nightmare began. The sole power station of Gaza has run completely out of fuel and has stopped working. Now hospitals in Gaza are on the brink of shutting down as they have very little fuel supply left. Israel alleges that fuel resources have all been captured by Hamas who have left civilian Palestinians to suffer and die. The only cancer treatment hospital in Gaza has stopped all its functions on Wednesday after its fuel supply ran out completely. Similarly, Israel says it has evidence that Hamas has captured all of these fuel supplies and to hell with hospitals and innocents. It's bombing in the night and in day, relentlessly in Gaza for the fourth week by Israel and by Hamas as well, since October 7th. It's a war that doesn't seem to be ending. In fact, with each passing day, it gets worse. Caught in this crossfire are the Palestinians cooped up in the world's largest open prison of Gaza enclave. Death tolls are mounting and supplies are drying out in hospitals. I want uh, to show you the reality that uh, you most probably do not see in the media. I don't know if I am working in a hospital or a refugee camp. The hallways of the Al Shifa hospital became a floor for the forcefully displaced Palestinians by the Israel bombings and destruction of homes. The only cancer treatment hospital in Gaza has gone out of service after it ran out of fuel on Wednesday. Normally, we would have had several hundred people going every day for advanced medical care, and, and, and they haven't, of course, been able to get those things. And now, with many of the hospitals, with at least five hospitals not functioning, and the Turkish Friendship Hospital, which provides cancer care, saying they've had to stop most services and they'll have to stop everything in the next 24 hours, we have many, many people with their chronic conditions just not getting the care. On the other hand, Indonesian hospital in Gaza that have been treating injured and emergency patients, even in the corridors and hallways, have a few hours worth of fuel left 
before it too would be forced to shut down. It's the same story for the handful of other hospitals still operating in the region. Doctors working in Gaza have predicted this days before. Health institutions in the Gaza Strip depend very heavily on the electrical generators for electricity and operate the necessary equipments for patients and injured people. Now there is a complete power outage and we rely heavily on electrical generators. The only hope for the injured and critical patients are now the ambulances that would take them out of Gaza to neighboring countries for treatment. Like these ambulances lined up near Egypt's Rafah crossing, they are waiting to cross into Gaza where they will evacuate injured civilians. And this journey to another shore for treatment is not only scary, it also requires nerve to brave the ongoing bombing from both sides. On land, from sea, and from air. Life is of little value in Gaza, but revenge is all that matters for the time being.